Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 6b. This is the second of a series of three tutorials focused on accounting for troubled debt restructuring. This tutorial will focus on restructuring of troubled debt with minor modification. This tutorial has five learning objectives. The first will be to review accounting for minor modification of restructuring of troubled debt from both the debtor and creditor perspectives. Second, to review the calculation of the concession amount for troubled debt restructuring. Third, to determine the type of modification of troubled debt using the 10% threshold. Fourth, to record the appropriate debtor entries to record a minor modification debt restructure. And finally, to record the appropriate creditor entries to record impairment of restructured debt. This tutorial is based on the Flockhart Industries B example and that focuses again on troubled debt restructure with minor modification. So please make sure that you have downloaded the required file and reviewed it in advance prior to proceeding with this tutorial. The tutorial has a number of requirements, the first of which will be to conduct the necessary test to determine whether or not the modification of terms related to the note is minor or substantial. So let's begin. Again, requirement one, the modification of terms test. What we must do first is record the note on January 1st, 2020 at its present value, calculated as five periods because it's a five-year note with an interest rate of 7%, a payment of 23750 and a future value of $475,000. That's how much is due at the end of the five-year term. The resulting present value and carrying value of the note is $436,048. Now, the restructure occurs on January 1st, 2023. So what we must do is determine what the carrying value is, or basically the present value, at December 31st, 2022, because the payments are at the end of the period, and the balance at December 31st, 2022, is the same as the balance of January 1st, 2023. Now you could do an amortization table using a 7% yield rate, which is what was used to calculate the present value to begin with and do all the work. However, you can also recalculate with 2N as the number of payments because there are two payments left. So if you uh, replace this with 2N, you should arrive with a present value of $457,824. Next, we will determine the concession amount, but remember that from the data, the creditor BSL grants Flockhart the following two concessions. One is to extend the debt by one year, and the second is to reduce the principal from $475,000 to $450,000. That enables us now to determine exactly how much the concession is. What we do is we take the carrying value of the old debt first from the amortization table. So when we calculated how much was remaining, that was $457,824. Then what we must do is determine the present value of the remaining future cash flows discounted at the historical rate, which in our case is 7%. What we have to do is change a couple of things. We have to change the number of periods from 2 to 3 because of the extension of the debt. The interest rate stays the same at 7%. The payment stays the same at $23,750. But the future value changes to 450000 based on the second concession. Discounted, the present value is $429,662. So that results in a concession amount of $28,162. Then what we do is we compare that concession amount of $28,162 against 10% of the old debt's carrying value. $457,824 times 10% is 45782 And because the concession amount of 28162 is less than the 10% of the old debt, that means the modification in our case is minor. Then what we'll need to do is to recompute the new effective interest rate. You'll see where we'll need this later in the, the recalculation of the revised amortization table. What we do basically is determine the new effective interest rate by taking 3N, putting the present value as, uh, don't forget to put your plus minus button, 457,824 is the PV. 
The payment stays the same at $23,750 and the future value is the same $450,000. So computing for IY, you'll get 4.64%. All right, now we can proceed with our second requirement and that is to prepare any necessary journal entries to record the modification of terms to the note payable for BSL on January 1st, 2023. Before we can record any journal entries, what we must do first is determine how much of the impairment loss is going to be. What we'll do is we take the note receivable balance on BSL's books at January 1st, 2023, which is the same as the note payable balance for Flockhart that we calculated previously of 457,824. What we do next is calculate the present value of the impaired cash flows at the historical rate for BSL. We're extending by one period, so 3N, the interest rate's the same, 23,750 is the payment, and $450,000 is the future value, and that's calculated to be 429,662. So the impairment loss is the same 28,162 as the concession amount that was determined previously. So that shouldn't be a surprise, right? So this is the carrying value of the debt, and this is the basically the new value of the future cash flows. Then what we can do is we can show in a revised amortization table that the new carrying value is going to have to be 429,662. And if we continue to discount that at 7% for three more periods, one, two, three, we will end up with $450,000 at the end of December 2025. And basically, what this uh, little note at the bottom says, if the impaired loss is booked by BSL, of course, the yield has to remain the same in order to arrive at $450,000. The journal entry then is going to be on the concession date or the restructure date, January 1st, 2023. And this is for BSL. We're going to record a debit to bad debt expense of 28,162 and adjust the carrying value of the note receivable to 28,162 and that's to record the impairment of the restructured debt from Flockhart under minor modification of terms. Also, if you compare to any of your lesson notes, you'll see that there are references at some points to using a valuation account. Here, we're not going to use a valuation account because the modification is minor and it's not an adjustment. Now we can proceed with requirements three and four. Requirement three will be to have us prepare a revised amortization schedule for the modified note payable for Flockhart, assuming a market rate of 4.64%. Now, this is given in the problem, but we also showed how it was calculated, so this was the revised interest rate. And the fourth requirement will be just to prepare any necessary journal entries for Flockhart to record the modified note for 2023. So let's go ahead with the amortization table. We start with the carrying value that already exists of 457,824. We add one more payment. So we're going to still keep the payments the same at 23,750. But now the yield rate changes from 7 to 4.64. And by now you should be comfortable with amortization tables. But if we take 457,824 times 4.64%, we will get this interest of 21,243, and we take the difference between the interest expense and the payment, and that gives us a discount amortization of 2,507, and this is going to make its way down from 457,824 to $450,000, and that's the revised amortization table. Next, we can proceed with requirement four, and that's the journal entry. So, dated December 31st, 2023, which is when the concession revision takes place, we will debit interest expense for 21243, which comes from the revised table. We're going to credit cash because that's how much interest is paid. So basically this note just continues, okay? There's nothing else that needs to be done. The carrying value stays the same. The only thing that's changed is the interest rate and the extension of one payment. So the journal entry for Flockhart actually does not have to do with any revision of the note. It's just revised interest. The interest expense gets debited. The cash gets credited for 23750 And of course, the balancing amount is the amortization of the discount in our case. And that's all there is to it for Flockhart. All right, now we can conclude with some key points to remember. 
So if a creditor grants a concession, and that concession could be in the form of a reduced interest rate, extended maturity date, a reduction in the face rate, or anything like that, then we have to calculate a 10% threshold that is used to determine whether or not the concession is minor or substantial. In our case, BSL granted a concession in the face rate, right, went to $450,000, and extended the maturity period by one year. Uh, also, if the present value of the new terms is less than 10% different from the present value of the remaining cash flows of the old debt, then it's considered a modification of terms. And that's what we had in this case. Next, the old debt continues, but it's restated using the new terms. A new effective interest rate is calculated for the debtor, and that's determined based on the old debt with revised cash flows resulting from the concessions that are made. In this case, no gain or loss from restructuring is recorded by the debtor, right? It's just a revised interest calculation and expense. However, the creditor records an impairment equal to the concession amount, which is what BSL did in this case. This concludes tutorial 6b. You should now proceed tutorial 6c to review substantial modification of troubled debt. And if you hadn't already or need to review settlement of troubled debt, then you should go back and look at tutorial 6a.